When looking for dark characters with edgy backgrounds, you don't have to look any further than everyone's favorite friendly neighborhood reaper. He's got skulls, he's got spikes, he's got dark secrets, and we're going to pull back the blinds and shed some light on them. Like, how exactly did Reaper get his powers? What's up with him in Soldier 76? And why is he so angry? I'm your host, Kyle Stover, with the leaderboard, and we're digging into Reaper's dark past right here, right now, in Overwatch Dark Secrets Volume 2. <laughs> Just who and what is a Reaper and why is he so dark and brooding? Out of all of the heroes in Overwatch, none are as edgy and shrouded in shadows as this guy. Reaper literally wraiths across the battlefield and leaves a wake of death behind him wherever he goes. On top of that, his lore is probably one of the more complex ones in the game, with layers upon layers of grungy darkness piled on. According to the official Overwatch website, a lot about the man known as Reaper is unknown. Height, age, alliance, nationality, nothing of substance is publicly known about this hooded figure. What is known is from sketchy battlefield reports and evidence from the destruction left behind. Seemingly able to wade through a firefight unscathed and braining victims to withered husks. His presence is all the more menacing when he's not trying to look cool standing beside a talking gorilla and a blue lady. Those who have studied his movements have connected him as a mercenary working with the terrorist group organization known as Talon. From his targets, it is believed that he is going after former Overwatch members to eliminate them, though the exact objective and motive behind the campaign of violence is unclear. Still, he's made enough waves that other ex-members of Overwatch have taken notice of him and stood against him with varying degrees of success. Looking for the man behind the mask. While it isn't widely known in the Overwatch world who Reaper once was, his true identity is well known by fans of the game. Gabriel Reyes, or Gabe for short, was once a normal man born in Los Angeles. No dark cloak, no gravy, gravelly voice, no solemn mask, just a man who would rise to the call when the world needed him. After joining the U.S. military, Gabriel earned a reputation as a hardened and highly respected veteran of many conflicts. As fate would have it, he eventually enlisted in the U.S. Soldier Enhancement Program, the results of which would set him down the road to becoming the shadowy figure known today. Considered controversial and still classified, top military researchers and scientists endowed the inductees of the program with superhuman abilities, such as greatly enhanced speed, strength, and Agility. If more experimental alterations were done at the time, that information has not yet been uncovered. Two notable super soldiers from this program are Jack Morrison, aka Soldier 76, and Gabriel Reyes, aka Reaper. Whatever they put into these super soldiers back then, it is clear that it keeps the fight in the soldier and the soldier in the fight for a very long time. Though both Anna and Reinhardt have continued their fight for justice in place of accepting retirement, neither of them have returned with the same gusto as Reyes and Morrison. Dead men tell no tales but they do leave a trail of shotguns. Something happened that transformed Gabriel into Reaper, as the original head of the Black Watch strike team did not have the pale skin and dark disposition in the early days of Overwatch. To see where things went belly up for our Walking Dead shroud, we've got to follow the trail from the beginning of Overwatch. With such a promising start, how did it all go so wrong? The Overwatch organization brought out the best in most people, but after initially building up a bond between the two, it eventually caused a rift between Gabriel and Jack that became their undoing. Despite successfully leading the fight against the Omni Crisis, the UN promoted Morrison over Reyes to Overwatch Strike Commander. This was due to Morrison being a strong leader who brought out the best in people and unified the diverse and sometimes conflicting members of the team. While Reyes was not a weak leader by any means, he was passed over as leader of the newly public and global organization tasked with keeping the peace worldwide. His resentment of Jack would only grow from from there. Still a distinguished soldier, Reyes worked more behind the scenes with Overwatch's Black Watch team, often operating behind the back of the more straight-shooting Morrison. Reyes's loose regard for regulations and restrictions would eventually come to light and pave the way for disgrace and downfall of the Overwatch organization. High-profile failures, corruption within the organization, weapons proliferation, and accusations of human rights abuses, among other charges, would launch hard-hitting investigations against the once-respected Overwatch. 
Overwatch. Once a force for good, their role in the world was brought under intense scrutiny by the public and various world leaders. Yet at the height of all of this, Reyes would lead a mutiny of sorts against Jack himself. Presenting the attention and credit that Morrison received for his leadership within Overwatch, Reyes's defiant behavior came to a head, and the two clashed on what would come to be known as one of the darkest days in the organization's history. While the UN claimed that there was no foul play involved, other sources point to a rebellious outburst that ultimately led to the destruction of the Switzerland headquarters and seemingly the death of two of the leading members of Overwatch. The exact details are not known to us, but it's safe to say things turned ugly and a fight broke out between the two men. Reyes's true agenda that day may never come to light, but we can piece together what transpired that day as best as possible given the evidence uncovered. One, despite their initial closeness, the tensions between Gabe and Jack finally broke. Two, their confrontation grew out of hand and, directly or indirectly, caused a massive explosion that destroyed the facility. Three, the UN claimed that Morrison's body was never found. Four, we know this because he survived and went on to come back as Soldier 76. Five, whether Reyes's body was recovered is unclear, but he was also presumed to have perished in the blast. Six, which leads us to speculate on what exactly happened to Reyes that finally molded him into the figure known as Reaper. It's stated that Reaper seems to exist in some sort of half-life state. His body cells simultaneously decaying and regenerating at an accelerated pace, which has got to be a painful process. An in-game voice line leads us to believe that Reyes himself doesn't know what has happened, and that even the skilled Dr. Ziegler, aka Mercy, is left baffled. There's reason to believe that this is the byproduct of his time in the Soldier Enhancement Program. Though the program didn't alter its subjects to the extent that we see with Reaper, it may have started him down a path of more dangerous alterations. Reaper's connection with Talon should also be brought into consideration. His deteriorating relation with Morrison may have presented an opportunity for Talon to leverage the two against each other, creating an opening by which to strike a lethal blow against the global peacekeeping force. The terrorist organization has long stood against Overwatch and has shown that they are willing to go to drastic ends to achieve their goals. Widowmaker is a prime example of what Talon will do to a person to better serve their purpose with her physiology heavily altered and her mind reconditioned against her will. Could Reyes have been revived by Talon and molded to a similar extent? This might explain his newfound powers, pale skin, and physical disfigurement. Whatever happened to Gabriel's body was enough to horrify one of his close friends, Anna, when she unmasked him in the Overwatch comic Old Soldiers. On top of that, in the Uprising event, voice lines from Reyes reveal his normal talking voice to have a slight southern accent that is noticeably absent from the usual growling Reaper lines. What we know today on the whereabouts and operations of Reaper. Whether Reyes' involvement with Talon is to serve his own personal crusade against Overwatch after leaving a for dead, or Talon has influenced him to turn against his former friends, is yet to be uncovered. Though it is said that he holds no affiliation and his true objectives unclear, teaming up with Widowmaker and Sombra on several occasions, he seems to work well enough with teammates, though his friendly demeanor has long corroded to cynicism. Oftentimes cruel and short-tempered, Reaper is not above mocking his enemies and toying with them sadistically. Wraithing about the battlefield, it's not hard to see him as more than just a man, but a pure embodiment of death walking among the living. He's done well to play up his persona as Reaper, dressing himself in all black and donning his iconic white mask. It's no coincidence that in Mexican folklore, barn owls are ill omens, with many superstitions around them. Knowing Reyes' upbringing, it's very likely that he picked this icon of death for himself upon finding himself back from the land of the dead. We know that his memories are still largely intact, as he remembers the Overwatch operatives he faced off against, and still holds grudges against Anna, Jack, and Winston. In the Overwatch comic Old Soldiers, when confronted by Anna, Reaper claims that Jack and moreover Overwatch are to blame for him becoming what he is now. In the Christmas comic Reflections, we have a panel of Reaper shadowing a family of three who are out enjoying the holiday season. While their identities have not been revealed, it has been stated that this is not a random family that he's following. A troubling piece of the puzzle comes from the stated sightings of a shadowy figure going decades back. Yet the Overwatch timeline leaves only about six to seven years at most that Reyes could be operating as Reaper. While Blizzard has had many conflicting backstories before, it was stated that this is not a mistake. Could Reyes have only taken up the mantle of the dreaded Reaper? One in a long line of anti-Overwatch operatives groomed by Talon? Unfortunately, more light is needed to see through the shadows cast over Gabriel Reyes and his literal 
turn to darkness. This has been Overwatch Dark Secrets Volume 2. Trying to put this ghost to rest is more challenging than pinning down a pro Genji, but it's clear that Reaper won't stay dead. Here's hoping that someday he can get some peace and we can truly uncover what exactly happened to him all those years ago. For now, he's cursed to a life of flanking and delivering edgy one-liners. I'm your host, Kyle Stover, with The Leaderboard, and we're dropping new videos every week, so be sure to hit that bell icon and join our notification squad. Connect with us on social media and comment below what you think pushed Reaper over the edge with Overwatch. Special shout out to our friend Eric Stover for gathering this information. And if you want to see more of his stuff, make sure to check the description below. Stay tuned for more Overwatch Dark Secrets coming at you from the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.